Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord has six unique cultures to select from, each one with their own sprawling kingdoms, internal struggles, and wars across the world of Colradia. The largest part of these cultures, though, are the troops that they allow you to recruit to wage war across the land. Whether you're going for a mixed faction army, selecting the best of the best, or sticking to one specific culture, there are plenty of units to choose from. But the age-old question remains. How do these units stack up against each other? Well, I'll be doing a small series focusing on each individual culture's troops, rating them from worst to best. Now, the way we're going to do this is that I'm going to bring up the encyclopedia and we'll discuss each tier of units within one faction, comparing them to the other factions across the board. We'll use the game's metadata to discuss their equipment sets and use the party screen to show them off a bit more if it's not as evident. For the sake of time, I will be skipping the first tier of every single faction because they're effectively the same, with uh, Azurai having the weakest tier 1 units, but the rest are pretty much on the same level. To kick this series off, we're going to discuss the Azurai and the troops that make up the desert empires of the far south of Karadia. We'll discuss the main troop line first, then end the video discussing the Noble line, especially since this line will always be the best of the best in class of its respective unit type, except for rare instances where it has a shared unit type such as Volandia and Empire, both having heavy cavalry focused Noble lines. But let's get started with the tier 2 Azurai troops. So here we are with the second tier for Azurai. We've got two units, the Azurai Tribesman and the Azurai Mamluk Soldier. Now, despite what you might be thinking about these units, they actually don't have the weakest armor in class. Tier 2 units, for the most part, have around the same armor with the Azurite Tribesmen, actually kind of falling right around the center portion of the scale, with Kazate at the bottom and, and uh, the, imp the Empire at the top. But what makes the Azurite Tribesmen such a terrible unit is that it has a very small shield, and it is the only two, uh, Tier 2 unit that has no access to swords at all. Um, the Sturgians have axes and swords, and the rest of these tier two units have access to swords. Now the Mamluk soldier, they do kind of make up for that with their access as well. Let's go ahead and jump here into the party screen. We'll take a look at them. You can see the, uh, the Mamluk soldier does have a sword, but for the most part, you're gonna be using Azurai tribesmen, and they've got a spear and then this hammer right here. So. That becomes a little bit of an issue when you're trying to build your army up, because as you can see from the tribesmen, the majority of this unit uh, leads into the bigger portions of your army, or your, at least your infantry. So while most people will have tribesmen, I find them to kind of fall around that center tier, with the Mamluk soldier actually pushing them up a little bit more. Um, again, these guys are not the worst, as people have previously thought. In fact, the Mamluk soldier's helmet actually gives them armor by, that is incomparable to both the infantrymen and the Sturgian um, tier two units, which are that top end. So I'd say they're that 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 third place or so right here with the Mamluk soldier, and then a tie for fourth place with uh, the Batanian um, clan warrior here with the Azari tribesmen. But the biggest hurdle, of course, is dealing with that massive tier one tax with the tr with the recruit. So after you really kind of deal with tier one and two with Azurai, your units start to really fill out and you start to have very uh, specific uh, units for any for, for the specific uh, uh, things that you want. Say, for example, for archers, for infantry, for cavalry, or for two-handed shock troop style characters. But tier two in and of itself is not as terrible as once believed. Um, I think a lot of people thought that because the tribesmen are just wearing robes, that these are actually very low armor value um, uh, 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 robes, but in fact there are armor value of around 5 with an arm value, armor value of 10, which are two of the things that you're going to hit the most. Their their head is of, of course very light armored, but again the Mamluk soldier does kind of make up for that, so if you're mixing these two together, you get a nice mix here. Their leg armor is pretty um, high though, which is kind of surprising. They've got a 14 leg armor on average uh, with, again, a very low head armor of around two. So I would, again, put the tribesmen around mid-tier here. They're not absolutely the worst, and they're not the best, and I think the thing that really hampers them is the fact that they just have a hammer here, while the Mamluk soldier makes up for that by having a sword with the trade-off that you're probably not going to have as many Mamluk soldiers as you are tribesmen. So with all that being said, here's how we're going to do this. I'm going to give each tier a rank, or at least the units within that tier. 
So taking a look at tier two, I can say that both of these units are about mid tier. And I'm going to give either top, mid, or bottom. Because there's so many factors that go into here. Like for instance, tier two is not the same for any other faction the way it is for Azurai. Azurai have zero access to a range unit until tier three. Everyone else gets a range unit in tier two. So Azurai units here, the Mamluk soldier and the tribesman, are again mid tier. They do have some things they could be better at, and there are things that are, are other units that are better than them, but they're not that absolute bottom, low armor, trash tier. So that's how we're going to be doing this moving forward. Moving into tier three for the Azurai, we actually have a very interesting situation. Azurai and Kazate are the only two factions or cultures that actually have four units in their third tier. Uh, Imperial, for example, only get two, while the most of the other ones get three. So it's a very interesting situation. Also, the Azurai, they didn't get any ranged options in uh, Tier 2, of course, but in Tier 3, like the Kazate, they are the only faction to get a non-noble line Tier 3 uh, melee cavalry unit. Uh, when we look at this, the only one that has it is the Kazate Horseman, of course. Then also, you get the Azurai Mamluk Axemen. So by looking at Tier 3 for the Azurai, we see what looks like a large jump in quality, right? We finally get access to a range unit with the, with the Skirmisher. We get a Footman who's got a little bit more armor, so on and so forth. But the issue here is that the Footman still suffers from the same problem as the Tribesman. The Tribesman has that mace and a spear. It's the same problem with the footman. He has a mace and a spear. And the amount of armor that he's got isn't absolutely as terrible as you would think. It still is around mid-range, with some variations not having this helmet on them. Uh, some, most if not all of the units in the game have anywhere from one to three uh, equipment variations. So the footman, Two of the three have the helmet, one does not, so it's very unlikely that you'll get the non-helmet variant. But what's interesting here is that because of this mace, it really kind of hampers the foot soldier for the Azurai. It's still, though, I would say mid-tier. It still kind of falls right there because the armor is so much better than the other factions across the board that the only ones that are better than it are just outclassing it entirely because of both armament, weapons, and armor. So... Mid-tier for the Azurai Footman, and if we take a look here at the actual unit, you can see here that you do get just a simple uh, Eastern Mace, as well as a nice big shield, which is nice, um, and a, a, an Eastern Spear as well. Now, the Mameluke Regular, like I said, is one of the only other non-noble line cavalry units in the game outside of the Kazate Horseman in the Tier 3 category. But... Because his armor is so subpar, he's definitely mid to even low tier with only two in this uh, category for opposition, the Kazate being that obvious high tier unit. So the Mamluk's regular is, again, it's very lacking because of its lack of armor. It's very terribly small shield here. We'll go take a look at one, which is at the very bottom of this list. Why wouldn't it be? It's got a very, very small shield for a cavalry unit, too. It does have a nice long sword, which is nice, too. It's going to give a good reach and be able to do some damage. But again, it's like mid to bottom tier, only for the virtue of the fact that there's only two in this category. Now, the Azrai Mameluk Axeman is very interesting. It does a lot of damage, but it has almost the exact same loadout as the regular. Uh, the only difference here is that you're looking at a two-handed axe versus uh, not having a two-handed axe and having a horse. But the biggest problem here is that the Azrai are the only culture to have a tier three two-handed shock troop, which would seem, oh, that seems like a very cool, advantageous thing. Well, all the other factions, their shock troops or two-handed shock troops, like say the Ulfhednar or the Falksmen are gated by their tier three unit having a shield and better armor, making it far easier for you to get to the tier four and the tier five variant. So I would actually put the Azrai Mameluk Axeman in the bottom tier because it doesn't have any good staying power in its armor. It has the exact same armor as a regular, but without the added benefit of the speed of a horse. And it's your only way to get into these tier four and five units. So it really makes it hard to, to really work with this. Now the Azrai Skirmisher is another interesting unit. It's got a spear, it's got a sword, and it also has some eastern javelins. But what makes this unit so kind of subpar is that you're looking at a tier 3 unit 
with an armament like this, with a terribly small shield, and when the other tier three, when we compare this to the other tier three skirmisher, um, javelin style infantry, we get better units almost across the board in armor, across the board in weapons, everything. So the Azrai skirmisher is that bottom tier. So taking a look at this again real quick, we're looking at a bottom tier for the Azrai Skirmisher, mid-tier for the Azrai Footman, mid-bottom tier for the Azrai Mamluk Regular, and bottom tier for the Azrai Mamluk Axeman. So right now, looking at the Azrai roster, it is not looking too good. And I will summarize my thoughts at the end of this in the conclusion. Let's jump over to the fourth tier to talk about the, uh, I guess, the real growing point of the Azri Azirian army. Tier four is an entirely different animal, though, than the rest of tiers we've talked about for the Azrai. And it starts really with the archer. The archer has got um, 100 bow, 100 athletics, and 100 one-handed. One handed. That doesn't seem like a lot, that doesn't seem like anything crazy, but the big thing with the Azurai Archer that no other archer has is that he has two quivers of piercing arrows. Now, the rest of pretty much every other uh, archer in this class has barbed arrows. In fact, the Sturgians have barbed arrows and a mountain hunt, mountain hunting, a mountain hunting bow. So it's a really terrible situation for the Sturgians. And the Azrai Archer, I would actually put in the top tier right next to the Fians. Uh, the reason that the um, Imperial Archer, in my opinion, isn't above this is because the Imperial Archer only gets one quiver. And again, those are only barbed arrows. And he has a nice set of armor, which is great. But my archers, I want them to shoot a ton of arrows. And it seems to be, and this is just a personal anecdotal thing, I don't think it's an actual tried and true situation. It seems to be that the Azrai Archers and the Azrai Master Archers, which we will talk about in a bit, fire at a faster rate than almost any other archer I've dealt with aside from the Fians. Though obviously the Fians are kind of separate here because they're a noble line, but I think as far as standard edition uh, units go, the Azrai archer is absolutely top tier. And that doesn't end here with the archers. When we look at the Azrai Mamluk soldiers, again, we get a really, really great mounted horse archer. And it's one of the very few horse archers in the game that are not in the noble line in tier four. Now you could argue that any of the skirmish lines for say the Sturgians or uh, the top tier, uh, tier five or battalions are considered horse archers, but I'm talking about anyone who's using a bow strictly. In this case, we get a hunter bow, 110 riding, which is a little bit better than even the uh, Kazate version of them and 100 one handed. And when I look at the actual Mameluk Cav themselves, they have a really nice set of armor. They have almost the exact same armor as their Kazate counterparts with less shoulder armor, uh, but they have really nice uh, arm armor. In fact, this is the best arm armor as far as like armor per weight value in the game currently. Um, but they also get this, a very nice shield and a good recurve bow, as well as a very long flysa. So they have a lot of really great just equipment out the gate and their horse is better armored than even the Kazate horse. So I would actually give the Azurai Mamluk Cavalry a high tier for the tier four horse archer. And this doesn't end. It's going to keep going. Let's go to the Mamluk guard. Now the Mamluk guard here has 100 two handed, 100 throwing and 110 athletics. Now if he had a little bit more throwing or athletics or one or two headed, I'm sorry, he would be top tier, but because the Berserker has more armor, has more two-handed, has more athletics, the Azrai Mameluk just falls into that mid-tier. But when we take a look at the, the this tier of the two-handed shock troop heavy quote-unquote infantry, we're looking at the Mameluk Guard, we're looking at the Berserkers, we're looking the, at the Manavliotons, and we're looking at the Falksmen. And the Falksmen are that bottom tier, right? They don't really have a lot going for them. And the Manavlians, Manavliotons, I'm sorry, have a lot of armor, but they don't have a ton of great skill. They're pretty much very run-of-the-mill. And the Mameluk Guard have these throwing axes, which they can use that 100 throwing towards. They have this beautiful two-handed uh, uh, Azurian axe they can just chop things apart with. So they do get the crush through damage, so the ability to hit more than one unit as they, they uh, blow through. But I think that once they get stacked up against the Berserker, the Berserker just has way better armor, has more two-handed skill, and again, has a two-handed axe. Our last unit here is the Azurai Infantry. Now the Azari Infantry is unique in that it is a tier 4 unit and it retains its throwing weapons that a lot of the other tier 4 units do not actually keep. Um, we take a look at say the Imperial 
the Imperial um, trained infantrymen or veteran infantrymen, they lose their throwing weapons after they progress to tier four. But the Azerai infantry keep it. And they're almost on par, if not exactly the same as the Kazate infantry, the veteran uh, spearmen. But unfortunately, the Azerian infantry have a couple points that are really not excellent for them. Like their leg armor, for some reason, is not as good as the Kazate. So they unfortunately get knocked down into a bottom tier because their armor doesn't really stack up. A lot of things are very similar. But there are enough things that just really don't make that, that uh, full translation. But they now have a sword. This is your first true Azerian uh, infantry unit that is uh, a tried and true frontline infantry unit that's got a sword and not a mace. And they also get an eastern spear and a nice big shield. So while these guys might not have the most armor, they're still going to have a throwing weapon. They're going to have a, uh, a, a spear that's going to allow them to do a lot of damage to cavalry. And that shield is going to allow them to have a very solid um, shield wall. So I would give the Azerian infantry a mid tier. So going through tier four again, we're looking at a high tier for the archers, mid tier for the infantry, high tier for the Mamluk cavalry, and just barely a mid tier for the Mamluk guard, unfortunately. But let's move on to the last and final tier for the Azerai, tier five. Now tier five for the Azerai is a very interesting one. Um, in my best units video, which I've linked in the upper right corner, we talked about the Azrai Master Archer, how it was the best archer outside of the Fian in both its reload ability and its skill, its bow skill was uh, the highest skill behind the Fian. It had a lot of things going for it. But in 1.4.1, a lot of these skills changed. In fact, the Azrai Master Archer has a comparable skill now to the Palatine Guard from the Imperial. So if we take a look at this here, attack up here palatine and we take a look at them we now get that same 160 bow and also we get a change of armament the palatine guard has a little bit um uh less or armor now than it used to be and the azrai archer actually has more armor now than even the palatine guard but the master archer still only retains piercing arrows from the tier four which made the tier four so solid but makes the tier five kind of a little fall, fall behind a little bit because the palatine guard for example has bodkins the best arrows that you can choose from the further though we take a look at the bow now now the bow for the azurai master archer is a step composite bow now for the palatine it is simply a composite bow now i'm using this as a comparison the most because the palatine guard i'd say is the top tier outside of the fian and the, Ma the azurai master archer i think the survivability of the azurai master archer and his armor and even though he doesn't have the bodkin arrows he still has two stacks of piercing arrows and his bow itself is better than the palatine guard so i still think that the azrai master archer is top tier i think the fian is still the best obviously because it's a noble line and it has so much more skill but what used to be the thing that made the master archer so much better is no longer the case now we have to look at the nuance of their armament what they've got going for them and as you can even just see here uh, they're not the same as what they were in 1.4.0 they have changed thusly and please do keep in mind this is early access these things will constantly change and i think that an update to this video is due in the future but for now we'll continue to move through this but our next unit is the azurai veteran infantry and it's unfortunate because the azurai infantry is such a strong choice there are so many great uh, values or portions of the tier 4 infantry that the tier 5 infantry just doesn't keep up with and it's mainly because of their armor their their uh, chest piece armor is not excellent in fact almost every single infantry unit by comparison has double the chest armor to the azurai veteran infantry in fact i think that almost every single unit just has way more armor and way better kits except for maybe Sturgia, which even then has some variations that are better than uh, this situation. So when we take a look at the Azerai veteran, uh, veteran Infantry, we're still seeing a unit that just falls behind the competition. The only thing that it really has amongst the, the competition, though, is the, uh, the uh, Eastern Javelins, which still do give it some good staying power. But unfortunately, I'm going to have to put the Azerai Veteran Infantry in bottom tier, if not mid tier, on, on the, the situation that it does have the uh, throwing Javelins. But I still don't think that those are enough to really kind of push it ahead. If you look at this competition, the veteran sergeant is just such a better unit all around. It's got a good two-handed weapons, it's got a good shield, and it has access to a mace, if not another two-handed weapon, depending on the situation 
uh, of its equipment set. If we take a look at the uh, Legionary, it has 60 armor almost all the time in all of its equipment sets. So it's just way more stacked against it. Or even if we take a look at the Sturgeons, the Sturgeons have way better armor and they have throwing javelins. So the only unit that is really comparable in its, I guess, relative terrible or uh, low quality is the Oath Sworn. The Oath Sworn, though, still eke out just above in staying power against the veteran infantry. So that bottom tier is shared with the Oath Sworn for the Azrai veteran infantry in tier five here. But this is immediately made up with the Azrai Mamluk Heavy Cavalry, which I'll just tell you right out the gate, are top tier. They are better, in my opinion, than even the Kazait non-noble line tier 5 uh, horse archers. Because those horse archers don't have the same bow that the Azrai Mamluk Heavy Cav does. He has a noble bow, which allows him to just really put so many more shots down range and do so much more damage. He gets more armor and he has a stacked amount of ammunition. Now they do have more ammunition with Kazay, the, actually, I think, oh, this is, this is the noble line, I'm sorry. Uh, that's actually the bandit line, isn't it? Yeah, it's the bandit. Um, the Kazait, they don't have, they, they have more arrows. So that is, I guess you could say, the caveat here. Uh, but, but the Mamluk Heavy Cav has got that noble bow, which is going to allow it to do so much damage. It's got good armor on its horse, even though it's a little bugged right now in 1.4.2. And again, it's, he himself has good armor. So he brings a lot of really good uh, staying power to the, to the table here. 130 riding, 130 bow, and 130 one-handed. He can actually do some combat if he gets into it, and it's not going to really sink him. And again, he's got a nice shield that can help him uh, really take care of any close combat he's going to be dealing with. So I think the Azrai Mamluk Heavy Cav is top tier for the Horse Archer. Now, jumping to our last unit here is the Azrai Mamluk Palace Guard. Now, this unit I want to like so much. It's got my favorite helmet, one of my favorite helmets in the game. Its axe is super badass and imposing. But again, it just has an issue with its armor. And I think that this is something that just needs to have a pass, quote unquote, in the next patch or two with the Azrai as a whole. Their chest armor pieces, for some reason, for both these units, are, are just abysmally low. When I compare the Mameluke Palace Guard to even the Manavliaton, the Manavliaton has almost three times the armor value across the board than the Azrai Mameluke Palace Guard does. The Palace Guard jumps up above the, the veteran Falksman, but when you then compare stuff like the Shock Troops, the Sturgian Shock Troops, which now have a place in this category of two-handed uh, Shock Heavy Infantry, that those things have way more armor than the Mameluke Palace Guard. Then we're jumping over into, say, the Ulf Hednar, which has a ton more armor and even better skills. So unfortunately, the Azrai Mameluke Palace Guard, I have to put it mid-tier. And it's only because it does have a throwing weapon, which is kind of nice as a nice little carryover. And it does get an axe, so it's going to be able to crush through things very easily but its armor value is so low by comparison to the other two-handed units that the only reason those two-handed units place below the Mamluk Palace Guard is just because they don't have the kind of uh, uh, ability to throw weapons or crush through. Let's say like the Manavliaton has a pole arm, which can't crush through, but it's going to be very good against cavalry. Or the same thing with the shock troops. He can't crush through, but he's going to be able to, to bring down cav very well. But when we look at the Falksman, he just simply has a sword. So... At least the Palace Guard has ways to deal with things from a range point of view, and he will be able to do a lot of damage to enemy infantry, not as much to enemy um, horse or cavalry like we can get with uh, the Manavliaton. I just think that his armor is such an Achilles heel for this unit that it unfortunately puts him in that, that mid-tier. So going through this again, we've got high tier for the Master Archer, we've got low tier for the Veteran Infantry, high tier for the heavy uh, Mameluk Heavy Cav, and then the um, Palace Guard here, sits at that uh, mid-tier, uh, taking advantage of its big, beastly axe. I mean, he looks amazing. It's one of my favorite-looking units in the Azerai, and I'm so upset that it has that placement. So let's talk now about the Noble line before I kind of give you guys my impression about the uh, Azerai as a whole. The Noble line for the Azerai is very unique in that it has a different classification than I'd say the other Noble lines, which are a little bit more cut and dry. When we take a look at Blondia, we're looking at um, a heavy cav shock troop. Same thing with uh, the Imperial. We've got a heavy cavalry force that's just going to be slamming into things. 
But when we take a look at, say, the Kazate, it's clearly horse archers. Or we take a look at the Batanians, it is obviously going to be just straight up archers. And then again, looking at Sturgia, it's a little interesting because it goes from heavy infantry to heavy cavalry. But with the Azrai, we get an interesting unit here that progresses um, in the first two tiers as just simply a melee cavalry force. Then as you jump into the Ferris portion of this line, you get a ranged cavalry unit. But not in the conventional sense of a bow, you get it with throwing weapons. Jumping all the way here to the Azrai Vanguard Ferris with a whopping 140 throwing. This makes for the strongest throwing weapon character in the game. The only thing that could kind of come close to this is in Sturgia, and I believe that that's at 130. And I believe also, too, in 1.4.2, the Vanguard Ferris's throwing skill was brought down just a little bit. Now, this does not mean that the Vanguard or the Ferris at all is a terrible unit. In fact, I think it's a very, very strong and a very good unit because it is extremely well armored. Um, it does kind of suffer here in the uh, fifth tier to have a very tiny little shield. Um, but even taking a look at portions of the other um, uh, tiers, you get bigger shields depending on which, which uh, rank it's at. I, I think the youth actually has no shield. Um, if we take a look at it, I think they have the same shield all the way, all the way to the to the, to the final one. Yeah, the, the youth has the same shield as the uh, veteran Ferris here. But the problem is that these guys are so hard to get access to, so it does kind of make them uh, a little bit of a niche pick. And that's the same thing with Sturgia, right? Sturgia has a very hard time getting their noble line off the ground. But if you can get a good force of veteran Ferris, they're top tier. They're really, really strong cavalry force because they do have still a 200 polearm and 170 riding. Now, this isn't the amazing 220 and 200 uh, polearm and riding, respectively, of, say, Vlandia or of em the Empire, but it's still a very strong amount of damage. In addition to that, 140 throwing is nothing to sneeze at because if you have these guys in mass, they'll be able to do a lot of damage, especially to another heavily armored cavalry force. So I really think that the Azrai Vanguard Ferris is a top tier heavy cav throne cav uh, choice for your army. And it's interesting because he doesn't get a, com a fair comparison across the line like a lot of the other ones do, right? Like when we look at Empire of Landia or Britannia. So we kind of have to take this in its own kind of stride here. But this is the noble line for the Azrai and I think it's an amazing one if you can find access to the units. So jumping back here to the primary tree, I'm going to put all of my rankings that I've made across the, the uh, entire video on each one of these pictures so you can see overall how I rank all of them. And I think that once you really get past the third tier for the Azurai, they really kind of come alive in my opinion. Um, Azurai, Azurai, I've been bouncing back and forth the whole video. I'm so sorry. If, if, if you have a specific way you like to pronounce it, please let me know in the comments. Um, but... When I, like, when I take a look at the Azrai, the, their biggest problem is that their tier 1 and 2 is such a bottleneck to tiers 3 all the way to 5 that it makes building an army in Azrai very difficult. And I think that that is one thing that needs to really get a pass when we look at further improvements upon these troops. Sturgia just recently got a massive buff to all of its armor and its shields. And I think that we need the same thing here. In fact, I would even be open to them swiping away the tribesmen and putting the skirmisher in this slot or at least a watered down version version of the skirmisher or just making the tribesmen a skirmisher unit so at least that there is some form of ranged in access in the first two tiers for the Asurai. otherwise you're waiting all the way into the skirmisher and even then that's only a throwing unit at tier three that is miserable so you're waiting until tier four until you get a very good archer, but an archer nonetheless. And you don't get any kind of noble line support for uh, ranged anything until, again, that uh, that tier three. If you even want to look at it from a horse cap perspective, you don't get archers until tier five, or I'm sorry, tier four over here with the Az Azrai uh, Mount Mamluk cap. So I think that the big thing that needs to be reworked for the Azrai is tiers one through three. If these were just kind of tweaked a little bit, maybe making the Mameluk uh, Axemen, <laughs> not Axemen, uh, Axemen have better armor because they don't have a horse. Give them that kind of trade-off. Just a little bit better. It doesn't need to be huge. It doesn't need to be astronomical. Give the Asurai footmen a sword. Make the skirmisher a little bit better. Maybe just more armor or something that makes it so that he is at least 
more able to uh, transition to tier four, because right now it's hard to get your skirmishers to tier four. And the tribesmen just make it a ranged unit. Give it a, give it a javelins, scrap the spear, keep the mace, and that way I can use these two units, because he has a, a sword and a spear, remember that. So I can use these two to kind of push through the latter portions of this tree. I think those simple changes would simply make the first three tiers a lot easier. And then as we jump down to the bottom tiers, I think the chest piece for the Asurai needs a rework. At I think it was like 34 armor as, a, as an average. That's abysmally low for what is supposed to be a tier 5 rank and file heavy infantry unit. I mean, you're, gump, you're jumping from, which is a pretty, a pretty decent one in the mid-tier here for the Asurai infantry, to just a low-tier one that's about on par with an O-Swarm, which is, again, a pretty terrible uh, frontier infantry unit. So these are my suggestions for tweaking the Asurais and hopefully making them uh, a more worthy fighting force that isn't hamstrung in its first three tiers. So go ahead and let me know in the comment section below what you really feel is the best and maybe even the worst portions of the Assyrian army. And I know this video isn't necessarily like, hey, here's all the units in line from best to worst. It's mainly to give you an idea of how each one of these really stacks up to their corresponding tier and counterpart across the other cultures. So I hope you enjoyed this video here today. Um, I'm going to hopefully do more of these faction and culture overviews, depending on what you guys tell me as far as uh, you like it or you didn't like it, or these are the things that you could change. I want these things to be covered in the video a little bit more. Um, I thought about putting the actual armor values here on the left, but they have to be averages because of the varying equipment sets. And on top of it, I didn't want to clutter the video too much with a, a census overload. So you let me know if you want to see those in the future videos. I can definitely include them. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. And if you do subscribe, go ahead and slap that little bell icon and go ahead and turn on all notifications. This way you'll be notified if I do any streams, any big game giveaways on those streams, or any of the other videos that I release, either guides, lore videos, and the such. But as always, guys, thank you so much for watching here today. Have a good one, and take care.